Her triumphs, I took a group of women that didn't believe in themselves, and I just believed in them. Her trials. I never wanted to go to practice. I was losing a ton of weight. Her story. I just put my faith in God and just trusted the system. Her why. I want people to see what I did and say, oh, that's so awesome. I'm going to be better than that. That would be how I hope that this journey ends. This is Her Why, where we tell the stories from BYU women's sports. Here is your host, Lauren McLean. We are so glad you've joined us for Her Why, where we celebrate the women who make BYU sports great. Today's guest is BYU basketball senior forward and last season's best rebounder in the nation, Lauren Gustin. Thanks so much for being here with me, Lauren. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is exciting for me. I, I love women's basketball and I love BYU women's basketball and you've just been an incredible bright spot for the team the last few years. You are a BYU record holder. You hold the mark for the most rebounds in one season and you also hold the Marriott Center single game record, which you broke twice. Is that kind of fun to say, I mean, not that you go around saying this to people, but <laughs> is it cool to be able to say I'm a BYU record holder? Yeah, it's a great accomplishment, and you know BYU is a great place, and has had a lot of great athletes come in and out of it. So it's definitely it's a huge honor to be able to be a part of that. Even though you earned the honor of being the rebounding record holder, you enter the transfer portal in the off season. What led you to that decision? Mm-hmm. Um, being a you know a, a grad. Um, student athlete I felt like I was you know had earned and had been in that had deserved that position to kind of go and you know explore the portal and kind of see um, another option that I was you know thinking about I went in close contact um, I just had you know one particular place in mind and had kind of just wanted to see where that was going to go um, it was a really hard decision to go in the portal but um, you know I'm thankful that I was able to go in you know explore that option and then really decide that you know BYU is where I want to be um, BYU is you know the, the school for me and um, so I'm happy to be back and uh, yeah it was, it was it was a hard choice you know going in the first place but um, BYU felt like home and felt right and the coaches were great about everything so What's that experience like? Because you have the fans, right? And mm-hmm. one year, like, why is Lauren <laughs> Gustin leaving? You know, and you, your coaches that were your new coaches for one year, and you just have a lot of voices around mm-hmm. you. So, what was that experience like for you entering the portal in the first place? Yeah, it was definitely a lot. Um, you know, and there's rumors and things that go around and talk, and um, you know, I had to kind of stay away from social media for a little bit and just kind of really focus on, you know, my thoughts and um, what would be best for me and uh, listen to just the ones that were, you know, close to me and had always been been by my side. And um, yeah, they were, they were good help and, you know, a lot of prayers and a lot of <laughs> um, talking with God about where I want to be. And uh, now looking back, I'm, I'm happy and grateful that I had that experience and opportunity to go in the portal, but I'm so happy with, you know, where I'm at. You mentioned that BYU felt like home and you had a lot of the support of the the coaching staff. But what made you ultimately say, I'm going to go back to BYU? Mm -hmm. Um, There was a lot of different reasons. Uh, One, the coaching staff, you know, going in the portal and then kind of having that separation from them. I realized, you know, how great of a program and how great of coaches they are. And, um, you know, they talked with me through it, the pros and cons, and were really realistic about it. Um, They did a great job at, you know, um, talking to me and and laying out a game plan for what we had this this season and um, then just realizing you know I've been 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 with BYU my last four years and it's always felt like home and everyone's always been great to me and it's been a great program to be in you know academically and um, basketball wise and I couldn't see myself really being at a different school at that point mm-hmm. and then I wanted to come home and you know finish my last year with um, with the family and friends and the culture that, you know, I had been around and I was just excited to be able to be part of it. Well, I know everyone was super grateful when you <laughs> chose to come back to BYU. You grew up in a very sporty family. Your brother, Porter Gustin, is in the NFL. Your parents both played sports collegiately. Mom played basketball at BYU in Wyoming and your dad played football at Wyoming. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Uh, how's your family's involvement in sports influence your passion for sports and basketball? Yeah. Um, all I've ever known is sports, you know, from a young age. Um, my older, my two older brothers were always playing things and I was, you know, a cheerleader for them a lot of the time and always running with my mom to drop them off at practices and um, having two parents that also, you know, played college sports and were athletes. Uh, you can just feel that competition within them with everything we did, really. So they were always great role models and 
and bringing in sports to my life. But yeah, from a young age, all I remember is sports. It's definitely had a big impact on um, just who I am today as a person. You have two older brothers and a younger brother and sister. Mm-hmm. So you are smashed in between yep. <laughs> two boys. What was that like growing up competitively, kind of competing mm-hmm. with your, your brothers? Yeah, um, it was a lot. My brothers are very, very competitive. And um, at first, yeah, it was just them two and me. And then my sister came next, but she was you know two years younger. So I felt like I was always trying to compete with the older boys and <laughs> trying to get involved with them and their friends and their little competitions. But um, yeah, you know, they made me a lot tougher. And they were they were always great examples of me, too, of, you know, work ethic and all that but they definitely pushed me man I I can imagine your mom Scarlett played basketball at BYU in Wyoming what was her influence like on you as a basketball player growing up Mm -hmm. Um, I always thought it was cool that you know she played college basketball and I kind of had always wanted to you know follow in her footsteps and do that Um, my mom was a great athlete in high school too she you know she did track and volleyball and basketball Um, so I think it was it was empowering seeing, you know, your mother uh, be able to do that and accomplish that and still, you know, have a family and be able to do everything that she's done. Um, but yeah, she was, she had, she was a big influence and just hearing, you know, her talk the game and know the game was always super helpful. I'm assuming her having played at the collegiate level, mm-hmm. always tried to coach you <laughs> and help you out. Was that an easy thing for you to be coached by your mom or was it one of those things that you're like, keep, let's keep your distance a little bit? <laughs> um, no, she, she did really good about the way she um, coached me and the way uh, she talked with me. It's my dad that's pretty hard on us. And <laughs> he played um, high school basketball really competitively and um, was trying to decide if he wanted to go, you know, college basketball or college mm-hmm. football. So he was right up there with the basketball. And he uh, he was always the one that was pretty hard. My mom was in more of the, you know, gentle approach and um, <laughs> was always just the accepting one <laughs> trying to be there for us. So she was she was good about it, but it was definitely fun to take tips from her. So was it hard receiving that from your dad (laughs) yeah yeah he would coach a lot of my club teams growing up and uh he coached a lot of my brothers um he coached them in high school for a little bit actually too but yeah he was definitely always a tougher one um you know has really high expectations for us and you know holds us to a high standard so he was kind of always the 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 hard one on us but you know we needed it and I'm happy he was there for us <laughs> I'm sure it contributed at least a little bit to where you are today yeah Did, have you ever played one-on-one with your mom um no she's got bad knees now oh, <laughs> so, come on. but um <laughs> if I'm ever getting shots up and she's rebounding with me she'll you know she'll throw in some shots here and there but yeah not not too much banging her around just because of you know <laughs> yeah body. yeah she's she's getting old now mm-hmm. how do you feel like your your playing style is similar or different from how your mom played mm-hmm um, I think me, me and my mom both had a high motor, um, definitely just, you know, like to run a lot and, uh, kind of be that aggressor. Um, I'm definitely more physical inside than my mom was. She was more comfortable in the perimeter. Mm. Um, but definitely just rebounding, going for the boards hard, um, running the court hard is something that, you know, I think we take pride in and just our work, work ethic in that. So definitely some similarities, but um, she was she was a little more comfortable in the perimeter, whereas I want to be more on the inside. But You've mentioned before that people have underestimated you kind of being an inside player because of your height, which mm-hmm. I mean, you're not short. So you're around <laughs> six feet yeah. tall. But I mean, for collegiate sports that can be on the shorter side, do you feel like that made you feel like you had something to prove every time you step foot on the court yeah yeah definitely um growing up I was always the taller kid um I kind of had hit that spurt pretty early so I was always the five you know no matter what but as high school started um you know I stopped growing and I was um definitely more of the shorter the shorter Mm -hmm. girls out there um but yeah definitely a lot of people you know underlooked it and always said you know I was too short to to play the five but um it always pushed me to be try to be stronger than the fives try to be quicker than the fives try to use different advantages rather than my height um and that's try to that's something I try to you know take more pride into is like getting in the weight room and being in the best shape that I can be because you know I can't make myself you know get taller but I can get stronger and quicker so well even though you stopped growing in high school you obviously did a phenomenal job because like I said I've been in Salem Hills Mm -hmm. High School I've seen your your banners (laughs) all over that gym so you had a great high school career and then after you committed to the University of Idaho during your junior year of high school Mm -hmm. What made you decide to commit to them? Yeah. Um, honestly, I wasn't a big fan of the recruiting process. Mm. Um, 
I don't know what it was. I just don't think I liked hearing the same thing from, yeah. you know, most coaches and just, you know, kind of going through that routine. Um, I'm also not a kid that loves to be, uh, you know, hyped up by other coaches. Like, the, like it just wasn't my thing. I, yeah. I just kind of want to be, you know, in and out. Um, I only actually took two officials. One was to the University of Portland and one was Idaho. And coming from Idaho, uh, born and raised in, in Idaho, it was um, a more comfortable you know, thought of going back and living in Idaho. I also had had a good friend uh, that I played basketball with that had committed there. Um, she was a guard, and I was familiar with her. And growing up, I didn't really have a dream school. Um, I knew I just wanted to go D1, and Idaho seemed to, you know, check off those boxes. And honestly, I, I didn't want to do a whole lot more recruiting, so, you know, I felt good about it and uh, just committed there. You're like, Idaho it is. Yep. <laughs> what was it like when you finally arrived on their campus? Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a lot different than what I had anticipated. Um, you know, freshman year for everyone's going to be tough, but yeah. I really really had a hard time um, with it. You know, I had um, a lot of other freshman teammates with me, obviously, and it was good to have them by me. But uh, yeah, it definitely was harder than than I had expected. If you don't mind sharing, what were some mm -hmm. of the struggles you faced that that first year there? Yeah, um, I think I struggled a lot with just trying to balance everything out in general. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be, you know, 100% academically, 100% with my sleep, my nutrition, and then also on the court and in the weight room. And, you know, I discovered real quick that that's not really, you know, a realistic thing, um, especially being a college athlete. You really have to figure out um, what you want to put more energy into and what, you know, you aren't going to put more energy into. So I really struggled with adjusting. Um, yeah, I missed home, but it was more just I felt like I couldn't, take really control of what at mm -hmm. all what was going on um going from having a ch we had our summers off actually at Idaho they didn't make us come until school started wow. so I think going from having you know a summer of just only basketball just and chilling and getting ready for school and then all of a sudden you know all these college classes and a really big specific schedule and just everything that all the freshmen have to go through in general um I just I had a really hard time trying to to adjust to that and um, it started resulting in me, you know, not sleeping, not um, not doing extra work, having a hard time um, going to class, um, struggling, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, everything kind of just started going downhill. And um, it put me in a really, really bad place um, where, you know, I didn't want to play basketball. Mm. Um, I, you know, I used to at once love working out and playing basketball, but now um, I didn't want to go see the weight room. I didn't want to go step on the court. And that's kind of where I had to try to think what's best for my health at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, take basketball out of the picture, take everything out, like what is best for me ultimately as a person. Um, and at the time I wanted, you know, to quit basketball, just be done in general, because I felt like I was in such a bad place that basketball was the last thing on my mind. Um, but after a lot of talking with, you know, my high school coach and my parents and um, some other, uh, you know, people that I, in my life that had kind of gone through college sports as well. We kind of came to a conclusion that maybe go to a JUCO for a year because this is before the transfer portal was, you know, a thing. And I couldn't just transfer mid semester to, mm -hmm. to another school. So um, yeah, that's kind of what we resulted in with that. So it was kind of your, your searching for perfectionism mm -hmm. and then it kind of starts to play a mental toll. And I think a lot of people don't realize the mental toll that is taken on so many collegiate athletes in that way. There's so much on your plate. What was some of the advice that you got from the, from your parents, mm -hmm. from coaches and the people that you trust that, cause you, you mentioned you were just kind of turned off to basketball. You, mm -hmm. were, you were turned off to exercising and, and all that kind of stuff. What advice did they give you that made you think you could possibly keep going? Mm -hmm. um, you know, a big person that I had um, gone to for help is my older brother. Cause he had gone through, at the time, he was still in college, actually. Um, it was his last year at USC. And so he had kind of gone through the process of, you know, the whole college experience. And um, he had moved somewhere even further than me. So uh, I kind of, you know, asked him how he had worked through it. And he's a completely different person than me. He's very um, non-emotional, I would say, <laughs> just gets right to it. Um, so it was, it was a little hard hearing him just be like, you know, you got to push through. You're going to get through yeah. it. You're fine. You just, you know, just keep pushing. And 
Um, so that was a little bit tough hearing that, but also kind of gave me some hope of like, I'm going to get through it. Like I know, you know, the first year is always tough. Um, but he just kept saying like, it's just a grind. You just got to put your head down. You got to keep working. Um, and then my, my parents were both, um, they were both really supportive. They just did not want me to be done playing though. They said, um, look, if you want to get out of this situation, like we're here for you, we'll help you. But you know, you shouldn't give up with this. There's other fits. There's other, um, you know, places where you'll, you'll be happy. So they were, they were really good about it. I think that they were having a hard time, um, trying to be there for me because they didn't know how to be because, you know, it was a hard situation. I had just been there for, you know, a couple months and it wasn't like I could just leave all of a sudden. Um, so they were, they were good trying to help me, you know, think of different, um, solutions and, you know, different plans. And then, um, my high school coach was really good at, you know, just kind of reassuring me that, um, you know, you're a great athlete. You're, you're, you're meant to play college ball. Um, you know, you can't give up, you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. So I had, uh, yeah, I had a lot of great advocates around me, um, supporting me, but not letting me off the hook, you know? Right. You decide to attend Salt Lake Community College. What new perspective do you feel like you gained during that experience? Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely was humbled really quick. I feel like, um, you know, coming from high school, having a great senior year, winning, you know, as, especially as a freshman, you think of yourself on this high level. So, you know, going to Idaho, um, I struggled, obviously, but then ending up now at a JUCO that was in the same state that, you know, I was I was living at was, was hard for me. Um, I kind of felt like a letdown a little bit to myself because mm-hmm. I had always had these goals growing up of, you know, being a D1 athlete. Um, it was really hard mentally at first, too. I just felt like um, I wasn't mentally tough enough to stay D1. And, mm-hmm. you know, I was worried, too, what others were thinking. Like, you know, D1 was too hard for her. She couldn't she couldn't handle it. Um, so that, that, took a, that took a toll at first, definitely going there, you know. Um, and then uh, physically, I felt like... I mean, I love the Juco grind. It's different. Um, just the process and the, you know, the things we have to do. It's, you definitely have to earn everything. You know, we have our practice jerseys were nicer in high school than we had at, you know, Juco. We're all sharing one big locker room with mm. really everyone, all the other athletes. And um, it was, it was definitely different, but it was kind of nice to be able to sit back and like appreciate what I could have and how, um, even, like this is a temporary spot sort of so it was kind of a motivation to be there of like okay I want to get back to that d1 level I know you know I got a taste of what it's like I want to prepare myself mentally physically all that way so when I do go back I'm ready for it you know um, and being there was a really great opportunity because um, I was also kind of able to relearn my love for basketball again mm-hmm. um, yeah the competition wasn't as intense but I think that I was able to build some more confidence on the court um, you know, through through Slick, and um, I had you know built great relationships too with with some teammates, which you know kind of helped me keep going as well. But looking back, I'm really grateful for my Slick experience because um, you know it made me want to get back t- into the D1 level, but also you know taught me the the importance of the little things of ball and just to appreciate the game. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to have more from BYU women's basketball's Lauren Gustin. This is her why. Welcome back to Her Why. I'm Lauren McLean with BYU women's basketball's senior forward Lauren Gustin. So BYU offered you a scholarship before you even played your first game at Salt Lake Community College. How did that early recognition affect your confidence, would you say, in the game? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the first thing it did was made me really appreciate BYU. Um, Them stepping up to the table and, you know, doing that showed to me that they wanted me, which was was huge. Um, Also, it gave me some hope that there's there's options for me outside of this and that I can, you know, get back to that level, so... Did you have any other offers besides BYU? Yes. Um, so I actually committed to BYU pretty early. Um, I wanted to stay in Utah. I knew that, um, you know, having my experience of being yeah. in Idaho, I, you know, decided this time around I want to be close to family. I want to have that support system by me. Um, so as soon as BYU came to the table, I had, you know, verbally committed. Um, other schools, you know, had still reached out and offered, but I was I was sat with BYU as soon as they, they came to me. You were going to do it. Mm-hmm. So you had to sit out a year back in those days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> back in the day, due to eligibility rules, 
How did you stay motivated and physically prepared Mm -hmm. during that time? Because that's a long time to just have to sit in and not be able to play. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it was hard going to BYU. um, I felt like I still had so much to prove. Um, You know, from the outside, it was I was a JUCO girl that had this opportunity at at BYU. So I kind of felt like an underdog once again. Um, You know, people didn't know my story with Idaho. A lot of the teammates didn't even know I came from, you know, another another school was just JUCO. So um, I felt like that motivated me to, you know, work and prove why I can be there, why I can, you know, fit in at BYU, why I belong. And then also just the the great like Paisley being there, older girls, Brenna Chase, Jasmine, all those girls, they worked hard and coming into, you know, a program like that with with seniors and older girls that, you know, worked hard made you want to work hard. And um, it was a good year for me to kind of get on my feet and um, adjust to that D1 style again mm-hmm. in a proper way, uh, because um, I think if I just got thrown back in the mix, you know, I, I you know, I could have struggled and whatnot, right. but having that time to adjust back into it and get into the flow of things, um, I'm really grateful for, even though it was it was rough sitting out of season. But what was that adjustment like? Like, is it mm-hmm. kind of a slap in the face? You know, <laughs> like, is it that big of an adjustment from those levels? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this school here is definitely a whole lot different than yeah. Slick. But um, one thing that BYU does good that I love is they um, they really take care of their freshmen, especially mm. um they're with the adjustments in the summer. They have you start in in classes on a lighter load, which is super good because you can kind of get the, you know, the feel for school yeah. and also uh, be doing basketball workouts. And then by the time fall semester comes around and you have a full schedule, you're, you're ready for it. Um, mm-hmm. So it was a lot easier, especially having great academic advisors around and kind of having a game plan set out of what classes I've already taken and what, you know, where where I want to take my yeah. my classes and all that. So it was it was it was a lot better for sure. When you came to BYU, you committed to to coach Jeff Judkins mm-hmm. and then at the end of your sophomore year, Juddy announces his retirement. Mm-hmm. What was that moment like for you? Yeah. Um honestly, I was I was super shocked. Um it was it was really hard at first. I was, you know, confused. Um there was a little bit of of anger and sadness and just a lot of different feelings. Um, I, you know, I had figured it was, he was, it was going to be his time eventually, but um, I knew that we were going to have one more year in the WCC and, you know, was in my head, I thought, you know, Jay was going to finish out one more year with us. Um, But yeah, I mean, it kind of came on so quick. I was, I was shocked for a while, but. And not only did Juddy leave, but some of the best offensive players Mm -hmm. left, what convinced you to stay at BOU during the time, considering there were so many unknowns? Yeah, um, I think honestly, just you know, trusting the the whole process and trusting you know Coach Amber. Um, you know, she came into the program with. I mean, I can't even imagine being in her position. You know, you're coming into this new program, taking yeah. over. It's you know, it's a scary role. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of you know backlash and a lot of negative things. But I feel like you know she she took the role. Um, and she did great with it. And so having that trust in her and um, just the whole, you know, process of why they had, you know, had picked her was like, yeah, she's the one like there's, you know, there's no there's no doubt about it. And just going full go and also having Lee from um, the old coaching staff was super nice to be able to have that, you know, comfort and uh, trust in that coach already built. And then having him, you know, follow Amber's lead just kind of gave the uh, the validation that you know this is this is the right move. So and she's she's done great at bringing in other coaches as well. Yeah. So yeah, she she was she's a perfect fit. At that time, you were already one of the leaders on the team. Did you feel a little bit of weight on your shoulders to help with that adjustment with Amber coming mm-hmm. in? You know, even not even just for her, but for the players. Did yeah. you feel any weight from that? Yeah, I definitely felt some weight. Um, you know, me and Smiler being like the the I guess at that point the veterans there with you know Shaylee leaving um we both had to step up a lot uh Nani as well which was a big role for her because you know she had she had just had one year under her belt so now all of a sudden she's she's up to the table with us three so um yeah I felt I felt it on my shoulders for sure but I also knew that it was going to be a different year everyone was going to have different roles everyone was going to have to get used to 
the whole system changing. So I just knew I had to go in with a positive um, attitude on it and be optimistic to kind of let the other girls know that, you know, this is how it's supposed to go. This is this is the right move. When you came to BYU and your first time you stepped foot in the Marriott Center as a player during mm-hmm. a game, what was that like? Yeah, um, it's just a very beautiful, historic like area. You can just feel... Um, just the energy and it's it's a really a, a hard to feeling to describe because um, there's been so many you know great games you hear about and great athletes and legends that have come in and out of that you know that arena um, so feeling you know stepping on there just you're you know you feel honored and um, just excited to be able to be there and you know proud of yourself for being able to make it there but also um, just really appreciative of having the opportunity to be there. You've had some incredible years at BYU, and I think when people think Lauren Gustin, they think rebounding. Mm-hmm. I think that's the first thing that comes to mind. Leading rebounder in the nation for women's basketball in the NCAA, that's incredible. When did you know that rebounding was one of your strengths, if, if not your biggest strength? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it wasn't really until college, I think. Um, coming into the year at BYU my first year, having to sit out, um, you know, I, I kind of told myself, I'm an underdog, you know, I'm a four or five. Um, Maybe I'm not going to be able to get a lot of shots up, especially, you know, over Sarah Hampson, these tall girls. So I just kept telling myself, like, what's one thing that, you know, I can control and can contribute that um, the coaches won't be able to avoid, you know, like what's something that I can do so I can make sure I'm on the court. And so I just really kind of took pride in just rebounding and um, just trying to make an extra effort to, to try to get every board that I can because I wanted to be on the court you know, at all times. And I didn't want them to have, you know, any reasoning of why I shouldn't be on the court. Right. So obviously you put in the extra effort, but there's also got to be more to it. Mm Because I mean, you're around six feet tall. You mentioned Sarah Hampson, who's six, seven. (laughs) How do you, do you feel like you kind of have a nose for the ball and Mm -hmm. you're maybe a little smaller, so you're quicker? Like, what Mm -hmm. do you think is your strength in that area? Yeah. um, I think I definitely have, you know, a good feel for, for the ball, but I think a lot of it too is just just having the effort of going for every board. I think um, a lot of girls, especially on defensive boards, kind of get complacent. They just expect, you know, the girls to be sprinting down the court and they're just going to kind of, you know, go get the ball and it's going to be there. But I think it's kind of fun to be like the element of surprise a little bit of just I'm going to go get the board no matter what. Like you, in order to stop me, you're going to have to like really, really, you know, put a body on me. (laughs) Um, And I think kind of proving too that, yeah, I'm small, but you know, I could still compete with, you know, fours and fives in a way was something that I kind of always wanted to prove. And you're small, relatively small. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you listening, she is red. Like, you are so strong. Like, it, it's just, it's mind-blowing. So you you have your senior season left, mm-hmm. which is so exciting, and it gets to be in the Big 12, yep. one of the best basketball conferences in the country. And you were named preseason All-Big 12 Honorable Mention and that's a big deal. So how does that affect your outlook heading into this season? Honestly, it's motivating. I wanted to be, you know, there's always better awards, yeah. better things to strive for. So um, if anything, it's just more motivating for me. You know, obviously I'm, I'm honored to, you know, have been mentioned at all. That, that's a great um, accomplishment, but that's that's not enough for me. So do you feel like you thrive being an underdog? Yeah, I think I definitely do. It's been it's been a common theme for me <laughs> a lot of my life. So um you know, I love it. I think it's it's uh, it's a fun place to be in. <laughs> when you think about your senior year in the Big 12, what gets you most excited? Oh, well, like you said, the Big 12, it's a, it's a great conference of basketball. Um, I think it's going to be so fun to be able to play against these, you know, these big teams and um, to play some, some good, good basketball. Um, also just, you know, like you said, my senior year, it's my last year. Um, which, you know, when I think about it, it's, it's very, very sad. But I'm also just so happy to be able to be around such a great group of girls um, and coaching staff for the senior year. I couldn't have asked for, you know, better girls to be around and better coaches to be around. So I'm just really excited to be able to um, take the season with them and um, be able to, you know, have one last ride with, with, with everyone and um, to finish out with the culture that has been established here with Coach Amber taking the head coaching job and, um just excited to be able to be part of it you mentioned your teammates you recently did a day in the life for the Mm -hmm. women's basketball team and it seems like you guys 
have a ton of fun. What's your relationship yeah. like with your teammates? Because you spend so much time mm-hmm. with them. <laughs> yeah. No, I feel like I'm I'm definitely closest with this team. I feel like than I've you know been with any other teams. I think our trip to Europe back mm-hmm. in August was huge for us. That kind of um, was the big turning factor that helped us all really bond and and get close with each other. And the coaches do a good job at um, having us you know rotate with with different girls uh for certain events and you know sleeping situations we're kind of always with someone else so Mm -hmm. it's not you know clicky or the same type of people um but being able to have that whole experience um was really good for us I felt like we all got super close and then being around each other every day um you know some people get tired of it but I think I think we kind of all love it in a way (laughs) um it's fun to be able to have you know constantly have friends around you um and you know sisters around you but also teammates that are going to push you you know in the weight room on the court um academically that's one thing I think we all do is hold a high standard for each other so you know it makes you want to work hard for for the girl next to you and people that kind of understand what your life's like yeah exactly like what you're going through yep. every day. <laughs> how do you feel like you've, you've mentioned coach Amber Whiting a bunch how do you feel like you've developed as a player under her tutelage Mm -hmm. yeah uh coach amber's given me a lot of confidence um i feel like me and her have a really a great relationship where we can talk really about anything um you know non-basketball related basketball related so you know i'll confide in her um you know when i when i feel a specific way about you know how i'm playing how, how i can do better and you know she's always straight up and honest with me and um really good at knowing who i am as a person so she can kind of uh she knows how to communicate with me in a way that'll, you know, get me motivated, get me pumped, uh, be able to push me. And um, that's something I'm really grateful for is that, you know, she's taking that time to develop that relationship with me because, um, you know, I trust her, her input. And um, I feel like w- anything she has to say, I, you know, value and can understand it really easily. One thing I love about Coach Whiting is she did not hide how excited she was that you were coming back. I feel like a lot of coaches could be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like trying to hide that. But she just was like, yes, she just like expressed it to anybody who was listening. What what does that mean to you? Yeah, um, you know, it makes me just super grateful. I remember telling Coach, um, it was actually right after graduation, our graduation ceremony, and she jumped up and hugged me. um, (laughs) And I held her in my hug for, you know, a while. It was it was a great moment that I obviously will never forget, but, um, no, she, her excitement and, you know, her joy, you know, made me feel even more at ease with everything and kind of, you know, reassured me more that this was the right decision and having a coach like that, um, that you respect, you know, makes you want to play hard every single possession for her. Mm, I love that. How do you, how do you mentally prepare for games and handle the pressure that comes right before games? Mm -hmm. Um, I think uh, having other teammates like, you know, for example, this last season, having like Nani, for for example, um, just having another team that you can, that you know that feels that same way, being able to confide in them mm-hmm. and um, be able to, you know, talk and kind of lean on each other is super helpful. It kind of makes you, you know, it makes you feel like you're not alone and that, um, you know, what you're feeling, they're feeling too. So that's kind of always reassuring and then just having a good support system um really just around you and and making you feel like calm about everything before games I like to just kind of decompress um whatever that means you know laying down taking a bath anything to just kind of get my mind um off of ball for a second and just breathe and um try to you know just relax is always good for me in my mind to kind of clear all the thoughts um because, you know, you can get worked up and, and overthink everything. But just having a clear mind going into it is, is always super helpful for me. We're going to bring our conversation full circle. You are a BYU record holder. You have a lot of accolades, not just at BYU, but in the WCC and nationally. Moving forward, how do you make goals, even for mm-hmm. this season? Like, what are your goals moving forward in your, your last year as a BYU Cougar? Mm-hmm. Um, I, mean, I think there's still records to be broken, for sure. That's that's a huge thing for me. Um, another big thing is is really just putting everything I have into this last year. I don't want to look back at all with you know different regrets of um, not going all out, not putting you know all that effort into into specific things. So a big broad one for me is really just 110 percent into everything, whether that be just our lift or you know team activities and obviously basketball stuff, but just being really dived in all the way. And um, as far as you know team stuff. 
um, I really think we're, we're another underdog, of course, um, which I think is good. Like, we, we like that. We like to be in that position. So just making a, 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 you know, a statement out there, putting BYU out there, um, that's a big one. I, you know, I think our team has is, is going in and competing, especially, you know, our first year. But, you know, personal goals, um, still – Still thinking of you know solidifying them each individually, but I know there's a lot of records you know I want you know I want to break and I want to accomplish and I want to leave BYU with me being you know the best version of myself and being the best athlete that I can be for BYU because you know I want to leave leave everything out on the table. Mm, so cool. We're talking to BYU women's basketball senior forward Lauren Gustin. Lauren, thank you so much for taking the time with me today, and I can't wait to see what you do this year. Thank you so much. You can download and listen to all episodes of Her Why on the BYU Radio app or wherever you find podcasts. Her Why is a production of BYU Radio.